The following episode contains content that some listeners may find disturbing. Please check the show notes for more details. Yo, what's happening? It's Robert Bruce and I'm here at my favourite place, right here at The Barbs, the melting point of art and culture. There's some amazing shows going on. I'm going to be exploring some of them and we're going to be talking about it as well. Today, I have an amazing guest with me as well. We both went to an exhibition by a lady called Carolee Schneeman, and she was just a force to be reckoned with. She rose to prominence in the 1950s with work on sexual exploration, womanhood, health. She literally threw her life into her work. And my guest is someone who I can say has done the exact same thing. If you've ever been around her, you'll know she's a bundle of joy. Her name goes ahead of her and she is in the seat today. Swazi is with me, everybody. If everybody was here, we clap for ourselves. Yeah. <laughs> How are you? I'm good, thank you, Swazi. Before we jump in, I like to give you just a light intro. But Thanks, for people that are coming across for you the first time, mm -hmm. what do you do? What's your thing? What's my thing? Well, I try and stay up early the same times you probably try and stay up <laughs> early. For a Saturday morning, though, so I'm on One Extra. I host the breakfast show from 7 to 10 a.m. Um, I voice BBC Sounds oh, and God. I am the founder of Too Much Source. So it's an exhibition with live events that are dedicated to celebrating black British creatives who are making history today. So, um, yeah, lots of things around nourishment and celebration brain people and yeah I'm usually on stage trying to live up to my six footness because I'm sitting down you can't see the height so <laughs> you see these optical illusions <laughs> trust yeah. me the Sometimes way I'm really trying to put my feet here so <laughs> no um, that is so, yeah. wicked you, you came down to the barbs we're at the barbs right now we actually saw the same exhibition mm -hmm. before we jump into Carolee's work what was it like walking into the barbs for the first time? Or have you been here before? Like, I have been here before. Yeah. I hadn't been to that exhibition space before. Okay. Um, and I think just coming out of Zoom, just coming off of Zoom and mm. doing a real... And what I loved about the exhibition, to be fair, is that you could do it at your own pace. Like, no one was rushing you. So I came with a friend and we had to jump back out and the guy was like, take your time, sis. It's actually, yeah. it's actually fine. So, yeah, just coming into the Barbican, um, to be honest, isn't a space I always come to. And so to come for an exhibition... Um, and to take my time in a space that feels fresh and new. Yeah, I really enjoyed it. We were at the Barbs and we came to this exhibition, right? Mm -hmm. Cara Lee, as I mentioned, rose to prominence in around the 1950s with her artwork and her paintings. And she, when I was looking at her work, I was like, how can one person be so creative? Mm -hmm. like, what is creativity to you? Like, how would you sum that up? Ooh, what is creativity to me? I think... Isn't it just the outward expression of whatever it is you think and feel inside? I feel like sometimes talking about this stuff, you can feel so airy-fairy yeah. and whatever. But at some point, everyone has this idea of this vision and you think, if this was to go to plan, it would bang. And the fact that only you could do it, you bring your source, you bring your vision, you bring your ideas and your story to it, there can only be one of one. And so I really respected the exhibition to think, some bits were my thing and some bits were not my thing. But to rate someone who said, I'm still going to put it out anyway, I don't actually care for your opinion. Like, yeah. it's going to go ahead. And I think that is something that all creatives need to have in the tank. Mm. Like, I'm going to go ahead with this. I'm going to persevere and get it out from my mind, from concept to, to something tangible and real. So creativity, I think, really does reflect what is going on inwardly to hopefully mm. put something outward as well. And as I was saying, Carolee was sort of documenting her time. And we're lucky now, like, we could just jump on Google. I feel we were like, we could even just jump on TikTok now. Yeah, we use that yeah, yeah. to find everything. But what she was doing was really painting the picture for her time through her life experiences, mm. the different countries that she went to. And I don't really view art in terms of drawing and paintings often. Mm -hmm. But when I was looking at it, I was like, rah, there's a story behind these pictures and these paintings. How are you with art and paintings and stuff, first and foremost? Yes, I think it goes to the question of like, what is art? Yeah. And so that really challenged me actually, because I was seeing some stuff, I was like, bro, to be honest, whew, I don't really know what this <laughs> is. Like, I, don't, I don't really know how to interpret this, but yeah. I think art is, it, it, it always, for me, reflects beauty. So I, no, actually, should it? Two, I think it's twofold, one, it being beautiful, and reflecting and representing things that are beautiful, but two, I think it represents things that are to be reconciled. So lots of her art is not 
on the front face beautiful. It's, it's talking about big topics that you think actually, this is wild. Like we shouldn't even be having to talk about this because the world should be put to right in some senses. But when you reflect, actually, this is wrong and it needs to be reconciled with what's good. Um, that is also art. So I do better with art that I can see literally and be like, all right, cool, I get it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah Abstract yeah. stuff, I'm like, hmm, boil the kettle because I'm really having to sit here longer <laughs> and having to process. So yeah, the exhibition I think did both. I feel that's the good thing about it though. It's like, it's down for your own interpretation. Mm -hmm. Like, I was some look, watching and looking at some of the pictures and paintings, like, my mind was going to a complete different place. And then I'll read the description and be like, wow, I did not expect yeah, it yeah, to yeah. be like that. But she was really documenting her time and I feel expressing herself and that expression is so important. Like you mentioned about if you have an idea, mm -hmm. only you can sort of bring it to life. If Carol Lee was an artist, let's say a musician of mm -hmm. today, yeah, who would she be based on what we've seen at the exhibition? Who would she be? Yeah. Can I circle back round to this? Only because I struggled with one point in the exhibition where the exhibition was very honest. Mm. Part of the exhibition was her saying, as a white woman, I know that I have a privilege of coming here and doing my art in such a way because my body is political as a woman, but all bodies are political in a sense. and. As a black woman, you don't always have the freedom to have done what she had done. Mm. And so when I looked at, the first thing that I clocked was the time, the time of year. I said, 1962. So what was going on in the 60s in America? You have a white woman here who is portraying art in the sense of, I want to be free with my body and display it how I want. Cool, that was what was speaking to her in that time. And that would have been pushing the boundaries in ways yeah. that maybe you haven't done before or whatnot. But at the same time, you've got, the bus boycott, you've got black people actually dying at the hands of white people also. And so those two things happening in the same time period, but I'm sure that would have been, not worlds apart, but just the fact that happens at the same time, I was like, that makes me feel conflicted. Because one, I think, what is going on in the same world as me at the same time as me? But also, yes, your body is political, but the world affirms white beauty anyway. So. Mm -hmm. I struggled with that. I was like, oh, so if she was to be a, a musician today... Where would she land? Yeah, where would she land? Like, I think she would land in spaces where she's pushing conversations forward that perhaps people think, oh, that's edgy, that's new, you can't be doing that. Yeah. Good, push that. But then I think she'd also land in spaces where people would say, you have a platform. You have a platform to have a voice and voice things that mm -hmm other people who don't share your same body need to benefit your, from your platform. So talk about that stuff at the same time. But then you think, as an artist, she might not want to do that. Yeah, yeah. And is she in her rights to say, I don't want to do that? I don't know. So <laughs> I feel very conflicted in all of yeah, it. But you when I walked through, stuff, yeah, I just thought, it's sad. Like I, I saw, I don't know if I can use this, but I think the, the um, bit of the exhibition called Meet Joy, really struck me, so I'm just going to read it because I don't want to misquote anything. Yeah. Meet Joy, um, were, she's described as an exuberant sensory celebration of the flesh. Um, it's where people came together, and it says here, they rolled, leapt, moved in tandem and alone, while shredded paper, raw fish, chickens, and hot dogs rained down on the stage. <laughs> I've got to be honest, I was a bit like, in the same 60s where people are being lynched. Mm -hmm. That really struck me and I thought, I don't know how to feel about that. I don't know how to um, reconcile those two things. And so with art, you always question, what's the purpose of that? How, how what, what is that trying to get to? What do you think that may have been? If you just look at it from her perspective yeah. solely, what do you think that might have been? I, I think she's, she's talking about flesh, right? And, mm. But what I don't understand then is, is the, the use of dead flesh because you've got live people rolling and sitting and lying on dead flesh. That, that for me was the, I didn't understand those two things, mm -hmm. especially when there is actual people's dead flesh in the 60s, just not getting the care or the dignity that, that we know deserves yeah. to be there. So but Even in what you're saying, it is sort of probably reflective of the times in a way that she didn't think she was reflecting it based on what yeah. you're seeing that as in 2022. Yeah. So it sort of leads back to why art is sort of important. Yeah. Because we live in a culture now where it's like, 
you can get cancelled for anything. Anything. And that's why I think she was brave about it, because who... I don't know. I don't know who was doing the similar things that she was doing. Mm. And she crossed borders. Like, she came here. Yeah. When they said... Oh, she came to London in, in 2002. <laughs> I said, did she? Like, <laughs> I didn't know she came to London in 2002 to bring the same exhibition across. So I was like, well, surely there is some people talking about this, and she's brave enough to go on record and say, I will do something that is so out, like, out of the ordinary and out of the box to, to put together. So... And as a woman, I'm sure, regardless of what time period you're in, yeah. it will be forever difficult to be pushing things and your ideas as a woman. So, like, not to critique it at all, I'm just saying, when I walked in, that was what stunned me. And, and I didn't expect to see, like, dead meat, raw meat with live people. And I was like, oh, I, was, I didn't quite... And th th someone from the barbecue was in the same room as me, yeah. and we both had the same room. It was a guy. Got, no way, you yeah. conversation about yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So he was like, yeah, it's not even... It, it, I just think f the flesh element or dead flesh... Really rocked it, him. Yeah, really. And it rocked him as well. I was yeah. like, OK, at least I'm not the only one being rocked by this. So, <laughs> But I think art should do that. I think art should make you stop in your tracks and really uh, cause you to think, what what is this? What is going on? That's why I think art, in my idea, is twofold. It's both beauty but reconciliation. What's she trying to reconcile here? What's gone wrong yeah. that she's trying to put a message in to make sure that it points back to whatever it was... That's nuts that you talk about shock factor, because I feel like now we're sort of desensitised to things. Yeah. We have access to so much media. Yeah, true. We become desensitised to things. Has anything of recent times, art-wise, shocked you? What would, like, what would <sighs> that be? Art that wise. in 50 years' time, when they're listening to us at the barbs, that yeah. it's going to shock them, if that makes sense? I think if I go back to music and being in radio, what still shocks me is the... And art, music is art in all forms, but the length of song. Like, sometimes yeah. I'm in radio, I don't even have time to go to the toilet, you know, because <laughs> <laughs> some of these TikTok songs are so short, yeah. and then you play it against, I don't know, a classic R&B track from the early noughties, for example, and them songs are four minutes long. Four minutes, four minutes. Stormzy's latest five. track is like seven minutes, right? You're playing the full edit on radio, so you think, wow, I, I think in art form, the quicker sound, the quicker beat, how exceptional it is for someone to say, I communicate my message in a minute 30. And it's still got narrative, it's still got a good beat to it, like people are still enjoying it. So I think art, yeah, in, well, I don't know, maybe we'll circle back to having tracks that are four minutes long again. Because mm -hmm. I think, yeah, back in the day when I was watching stuff, I think, it's over in a minute and a half, where's the punchline, <laughs> do you know what I mean? So, yeah. What was here for you at Carolee's Carolee, exhibition? I think what was here for me was the... Did you see the wheel bit and it had, like, clattering cans? Yes, 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 it was just going round. It was just going round, round. Yeah. yeah. And then, and then round the other corner, there was a mop that she was just... Banging the Banging, TV. Yeah. yeah. And do you know what? I heard this mop from time. I said, the bubblegum, have you not heard that there's a... <laughs> not realising, it's part of the exhibition, but using sound and visuals and creating the journey to be like, OK, you might hear something over here, but you may not see it revealed until room four. And I really like the idea that you could keep your audience engaged from the beginning when you were first walked in right through to the end. So I think even as a creative, how do you keep your audience engaged for longer than the immediate opening or the immediate drop of whatever it may be? And I think as a host, it's true. You know, you, I love to think of myself as a host because you're hospitable. You walk in. Have you got a drink? Have you come with today? Oh, you not come with no one? I'll come and sit with me because... But that was youth group. That was youth group because when you're in school, everyone don't really want to be talking to someone else outside of their clique. You want to make sure people are warm and, and, and ready to jump in because by the time you've got Q&A going, you want people to ask as many questions as possible. So, yeah, I think, like, what for me was the idea of how can I stay engaged all the way through because... People was walking around and I could see them. I was like, you haven't read all of that. You've yeah. definitely walked ahead. <laughs> but some people I lapped twice because they hadn't even moved from the second room. So I was like, oh, what are they reading that I didn't clock then? Like, let me go back to room two and, and see what was there. So, yeah, being engaged and how much of that is the audience's versus the artist's responsibility is also... It's so there. funny that you mentioned the can and the mop because I literally videoed it. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And just thinking about it, it's so mad that she had to live her life to get to that stage, but somehow that mop and the TV is connected to the first piece of art because mm -hmm. it's connected through her. So there's something in that that's like, you don't know where your story's going to end up yeah. and how it's going to be written and the things you're going to explore, but you've just got to do in the now. Mm. And at the end, the big picture sort of 
builds into one beautiful piece. Like, yeah. Do you reflect that on like sort of life? Do you see your life like that? Like it's a big canvas that you're painting now or are you someone that this is the end picture that I want to paint and I'm going to draw until I get there? Yeah. You know, as you just said canvas, this is such a baby girl move, but you, have you seen Prince of Egypt? <laughs> oh, many a moon. <laughs> Yeah, for instance, there's one banging song in there, yeah, about like tapestry, and he's basically like uh, the character is basically saying, like your life might be this little bit, but in the grand scheme of the tapestry, everyone's lives weaves into each other. And I think as a creative, you, I personally, how my hands up, can get bogged down in this bit of the canvas when actually the canvas runs all the way over here. You know, like Swaz, get your head out of this. <laughs> say yes to this project. Do it with all your heart, but move on. Like don't don't let that consume you. So yeah, to, uh, the idea that things circle back around. Before we started recording, there was someone that I said hello to who had written a piece on Chris Cabba, and I teach English on um, Thursday evenings to um, someone in year eleven, and we used. Um, the writer's text as the practice paper text. Wow. And this kid was like, oh, and I said, you know the writer is alive because half the time we'd be writing and critiquing work of people yeah. who have long gone before us. But to think, no, this person is alive and, and then today it circled back round. So of course life comes back round in full motion. Of course it mm -hmm. always comes back. So the power of saying yes to things and not knowing where they will end up. Um, as a creative, I think that's our life story. Like oh, things, yeah, yeah, yeah no, things facts, always come back round again. Facts, so, facts, facts. Yeah. Right, Swazi, if aliens landed on the planet today, yeah, nope. <laughs> they landed at the barbs just outside this window that we're looking at, mm. and you're the first people to go and talk to them, and the only word they had in their mind was womanhood. Mm. How would you describe that and break that down to them? What would you say your perspective of that is? And I know that's a huge place to start, but what's the first thing that pops to your mind? Joy. Yeah, explain why. I'd say joy, there's a lot of joy in being a woman, a lot of joy in being a girl. There's a lot of joy in being around other women and other girls. Um, there's a joy in sitting with your girl and seeing something funny and she clocking it before you, but you've clocked it already and the two of you are like, ah, oh, you saw the same thing. That's beautiful. There's a joy of walking in rooms that you don't know anyone and you spot your girl from the other side and you're like, thank goodness my girl is here at the same time. Um, I think you would also have to say um, wisdom, like being a young girl. I'll never forget, like I was walking home from netball when I was, oh gosh, like year nine. Like we just come back from Dorcas. Dorcas, if you're watching this, I love you sis. The two of us <laughs> walking home and I think we won. So we were gassed, we were in our own yeah. minds. This is like October evening, maybe even November, it was dark. And we got to my road, Dorcas lives a little bit further up. Mm. And we were walking, walking in our netball gear, like skirt, like blazer, oblivious. Walking side by side. And I saw this guy behind me and he crossed the, when we crossed. And I thought, oh, that's interesting. We kept walking. Dorcas is chatting. Dorcas is not yeah, clocking yeah, nothing. Yeah, yeah. We cross again. This guy crosses. I said, Dorcas, I think, I think someone's following us. Mm. She's yapping, yapping about the game. Yeah. I said, just stop here. By the time I stopped here, I was opposite my house on the other side of the road. And there was a blue van in between my house and where we were. And I just stopped by the blue van to see if this guy would walk past. As soon as I poked my head through the blue van, his face, pale as anything, poked his head through on the other side. I grabbed Dorcas. I said, run, 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 run. Wow. I had never run so quick in my whole life. And in that moment, at that age, I was like, what? Is he gonna grab? Like, I was waiting for someone to grab me. I really, really was waiting for someone to grab me. And we got to the church that my friend, mum used to work at the time. And they were just like, just sit, like, we were so shook up. And when I look back, he wasn't there. But I think stories like that to aliens, I'm appreciative because they will believe me. So many yeah, times you tell these yeah. stories and people will say, oh, he was just trying to cross the same time as you. No, he was trying to mm. do harm. He was trying to take us. Like, yeah, yeah. just believe what I'm trying to tell you. So as much as there is joy in being a girl, there is always room to be like, am I safe? Am I all right? Like, mm. who's going to believe me when I tell them this has happened? Um, and so I would also tell this alien the gospel. Mm. I would tell the alien that this world that you have crashed and landed into is broken, bro. Like maybe your world is better than the one here, but things are fractured and things are broken and this is not it was intended to be. But there's a God who rules this world and he's Lord over this world and he loves me. And because he loves me so much, he's gonna come and correct it. He's gonna come back, but in the meantime, the gospel says if you believe in Jesus Christ who died on a cross, rose again and put your faith in him 
actually the things that are broken in this world, you live for another world that is no longer painful, no longer stressful, no longer has people running after you at the dead of night and trying to follow you in your netball outfit. Those things will be gone. And so there's hope there. There's hope that goes beyond the grave. And I think, yeah, being a woman, being a girl and putting that in the in the in everything that the gospel offers me is beautiful but it's safe and there's mm. there's there's joy in that so yeah it's so mad that you contrast it like that because you literally said the same thing about art art is beauty but there's also something that needs to be reconciled yeah. and i guess that's a wider narrative of life itself mm. and the reason i wanted to explore what womanhood meant to you because obviously carolee depicts womanhood in her way and how she does it. And if them aliens were to walk through the exhibition, mm -hmm. what do you think their representation of womanhood would be through Carolee's artwork? Whew, I think they'd be like, oh my gosh, do you lot not rate these lot? Like, <laughs> <laughs> these lot are sick. And, and the fact that you were, I, I, think, I think if Carolee and I were to sit down together, she would tell me stories and I would have to say to her, I believe you sis, mm -hmm. like, you don't have to convince me. I believe that what you were going through in the 60s and the 50s, whenever was, was happening, I, I, you don't have to tell me twice, I believe you. And the sad thing is, if I were to tell her this is happening in 2022, she might be like, no way. Surely the world has come a lot further on. It, I, my maths is terrible, but 60 yeah, years, whatever yeah, that is, yeah, yeah. from when I was. And I, I think, yeah, I think that would also play a factor in it. But I think if aliens were to walk through I think there would be a sadness in the idea that you have to put an exhibition up to highlight things of female safety or don't look at us as sexual objects or like our dignity, our respect, all of that is, is, is intact because we're made in the image of God. We are made with those things anyway. And so when anything wars against that, you then have to have a Carolee to say, no, 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 remember that we are human, we are, we are humans just like you guys are as well. Um, and I think that's political and will continue to be political until it's reconciled. Something that struck me was at the exhibition, yeah? Mm. Carolee's work was really reflective of the time. So we got to the technology bit and it's the TVs mm -hmm. and all of that sort of stuff. And it made me think longevity is so important. And you were talking about earlier how we get such short songs right now and things are so popcorn here, there and gone. Mm. Whose work do you think from today that we consume or someone, one of your personal favorites, yeah. an artist, a creative that we consume today will last the next 60 years? Oh gosh. Um, who do I think? Well, I think of the greats who have lasted beyond, like the Nina Simone, for example, yeah. or the Lauren Hills or Beyonce, for example. Um, I think in the art world, um, I want to give a massive shout out to Kajari Made It. I don't know if you know if Kajari Made It. She is my favorite. She is able to capture what is going on in this world and put an illustration to it. And then the text or the title or the caption, it basically throws your heart onto timelines. And it's like, what you were trying to say in articulate, she's been able to do it in two sentences or less. And I just think an artist, ability to just socially commentate on what is going on and put satire to it or sarcasm or just humor because if we don't laugh we will cry because at the end of it they oh my gosh but you can always go to her to think and often in the comments you think what have i missed what's gone on what's popped off that i didn't see that i didn't know and i think for that reason kajari will really really stand the test of time because there will always be something to talk about there will always be something to comment on but to do it articulately but also with humor to keep you coming back and thinking i wasn't the only one who thought this was mad so the fact that she's able to do it in such a quick turnaround um yeah kajari made it is one for me and she's an illustrator did yeah you say? She's yeah an illustrator. An illustrator okay illustrator yeah. writer mm -hmm. sort of a, yeah, yeah. where can we find her just for people that are listening um at kajari made it on all socials and she has got a book called stay woke kids and that is brilliant yeah. as well not just for kids go and get it as well <laughs> But yeah, lots of things that you think or feel, oh, I'm not too sure on how to explain this. She does it, so basically, follow her. <laughs> and putting a mirror up against you, imagine I'm holding the mirror. Oh no. What My do you want to be known for in 60 years time? Or what do you want mm. your work to have communicated or your art to be talking to people about? Um, that's a great question. I think, I think every, like, it's easy to say legacy, but yeah. what does your legacy look like, look like right? I think, um, generosity in, in, in all forms. Like, 
if we went to dinner and you're like, Swaz, I can't come because of coins. Please, don't let coins be a reason why you don't come to dinner. So I think generosity, but also in time. Like the idea that you'd sit with someone in the good times and the bad times. I think people remember you for how much time you spent with them. Um, so that would be one element. But then two, just joy, man. Like if Swaz yeah. is doing anything, you're going to have a good time. <laughs> you're going to get fed well. You're going to dance and shake a leg. You're going to just be able to remember, oh yeah, this is what it feels like to have fun against all the stresses of life. I think you know, like, when I first became a Christian, I didn't clock that Jesus was a real guy. Like, I didn't know, like, I thought he was a fairy tale. I just thought he, he, he was like the BFG or something. But yeah. when I went to youth group and I was like, right, there's young people who clocked that this guy really did walk. And if he died and rose again, there's a joy to that. He said, I've come to give life and life to the fullest. And when you experience that joy, you're like, why would I settle for anything less? Like, there's people that you read about who have that joy to them. And so, yeah, just to inject that. And I think legacy and joy and just being heard um, would be a lovely legacy. So if I am around, by God's grace, in 60 years' time, <laughs> woo, then, yeah, definitely joy would be, would be lovely to be known for. And that will be your mirror to the world, man. Mm. Oh, that is absolutely beautiful. And I really enjoyed going to the exhibition, right? One, because it's out of my world. Like, yeah. I don't remember the last exhibition I went to. Mm -hmm. And as a guy, um, how did you... What did yeah, you take away? So there's, there's little bits where... Sometimes you need to be on the bench mm -hmm. and watch the game play out. And sometimes you can be on the court or you can be on the field, right? Mm. So for certain times when it got to the technology bit, I was on the field because I can see that, I can relate to it, I can connect to it. But there's also being an advocate for injustice, which mm. you need to sort of educate yourself on and be aware of what does your positioning look like in that. And one of the things I took away from it was body image, mm. because the perception of body image, especially in today's society, is like everything has to look a certain way and yeah. the filter has to bang like this. And I've got sisters, I got married last year, so I've got a wife. And oh, I sort of see the pressures of being a woman from a different angle. Yeah. What do you think about body image and the perception of body image in this day and age right now? Like, do you feel any of those pressures? Can you see people feeling them pressures? And how do we? push those boundaries and bake, break those boundaries as well. Yeah, the pressure is there. Like, I'll tell you that for, for straight facts. Like, the pressure is there. I was at an agency and um, literally they would say to me, like, could you just wear less? <laughs> really? Could you wear more makeup? Can you look more like this? And to be honest with you, that's just not me. Like, if someone wants to go ahead and do that, do you? But the fact that that was in connection to, but your followers will go up, your traction will go up, your clout will go up. And I was like, why can't it just go up because I'm a good host? Mm. Why can't it just go up because I know how to hold good conversations? Why can't it just go up because I don't want to do those things and I will flourish anyway? So I think, yeah, there is a pressure to look a certain way and to act a certain way as a girl. Um, and to go against it is actually quite radical in this day and age. It's actually quite radical to say to the client, no, I don't want to do that. Like, have you got another outfit that would also bang? Like, have you thought about this? Um, and it goes back to being heard and trusted. Oh my gosh, you would think that you haven't, you've been doing this since you woke up last night. Like, mm -hmm. I know how these things are. I've done lots of events. So trust me when I say this will do well. Um, but I think also what plays in, I'm, I'm, I work with a lot of kids often, so I'm also thinking, oh, well, the age range of who I'm hosting, networking with, all of that, I, I try to be conscious about as well. So, um, yeah, the pressures are on, and I think as a woman, your life will, <laughs> is a forever, <laughs> a radical state. So, yeah, keep on pushing boundaries, girls. Like, yeah, be, be confident in, in your decision making and what you think works best. Um, you can't go wrong. You see what I mean? There's so many things that you can pull from an exhibition for people like me and you, who sometimes we didn't get some of the abstract bits, but yeah. we've still managed to have a big conversation about mm. it. How did, if you were to sum it up, how did this exhibition make you feel overall? I think overall, um, the exhibition made me feel um, challenged and conflicted. I think um, my fight is not everyone else's fight and nor is their fight mine. Um, so don't get angry, Swaz, if someone is not fighting your fight because they're probably thinking that about you. Um, 
but also accountability. Like I want to, it made me think who was happening, who was also doing art at the same time. I just took 60s and was like, that's why I brought bear MLK stuff. Because wow. also MLK in color, he's cute, you know, <laughs> like literally he's very cute. And often you see things in black and white, you think it's older than it is. Like lots of our parents' generation, it is from the 60s. So you mm. think, whoa, they had color. Like, let yeah, me see yeah. color. So I think, yeah, when I came away from it, I was like, let me go and dig a little bit deeper because I don't want to say this is one story and one story fits all. There was so much happening at the time, which is why I'm grateful for you. Like, on and off camera, like, the fact that you're doing what you're doing and so many creatives, you build a collective story of the time that if you dropped an alien in, they're like, all right, let me go see what Swaz is doing, but also let me go see what you're, do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, and I think yeah. everyone needs that in order to build that wholesome, like, holistic story of what's happening. So, yeah, challenge conflicted, but I'm glad I went. I'm really, really yeah, glad. Yeah. So thank you. Thank you for and having even me. even off the back of that, in three words, how was your time at the Barbs? It was great. <laughs> it was great for you. Yeah, yeah. Three Thank words, you very yeah. Much. It was was great. Great. Thank you for coming down. Thank, Thank you for you. being a guest on the show as well. Thank you for coming to the exhibition. No, blessings. Thank you for having me. Thanks.